So I'm going to walk you today in the next just five to eight minutes on what are some of the things you should be looking out for if you're going to be buying a Ford GT. Hey guys, so you know, I'm looking here at Doug Marino's video on how he spent $28,000 on his 2005 Ford GT and that brought me to one of my own points which was how I've actually spent almost $20,000 on my own 2006 Ford GT. If you are in the market for a Ford GT, there are things you need to know because there's a lot of things that people don't tell you when you're looking at these cars. So I'm going to walk you today in the next just five to eight minutes on what are some of the things you should be looking out for if you're going to be buying a Ford GT. Now, I tell you this because on this channel, we're all about teaching people how to make good financial decisions around buying certain cars. Now, one of the elements of buying the right car includes knowing what it's gonna to cost to own it. And a lot of times when we buy older cars, cars that are basically uh, 10, 15, 20 years old, we are going to run into some type of repair, which is okay because we can factor that repair into the cost of the car. And so today we're going to look at what those repairs are and we're going to also talk about the most commonly unknown uh, issues that arise on the 4 GT. So this is a 2006 4 GT 4 option. And if you haven't actually watched my other videos, you can do so. Uh, where I basically talk about why I love the 4 GT and why I bought it. And many of you know since the movie has come out, the 4 GT has become more and more of an icon that needed to be purchased from a resale standpoint, future value, investment value, etc. And so many YouTubers have bought them. One of the things they're not talking about, which Doug Marino was, which was actually really cool, is that there are costs associated with buying a much older car. And these costs are basically things that you're going to repair, some of which are going to be easy, some of which are not. The good news with repairing a Ford GT is basically that the Ford GT is a Ford, and so it's a lot more affordable than, let's say, a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, or anything else. But instead, what it really is, is an opportunity to really play hide and seek with the parts. You see, the issue with the Ford GT is that while we have really, really good parts that are very cheap, what we don't have is an easy to find amount of parts. And you see, with the motor parts, it's a little bit easier because Ford has reused a lot of these components in newer cars. However, with some of the body parts, it's near impossible. So we've been waiting actually for a valve here for the last two and a half months with no indication of when it would ever become available simply because Ford just doesn't know. However, thankfully, this isn't a part that is needed in order to function, but just a part that would make the car function better. So in context, here are some basic things that have occurred since we've bought the car. I basically had to redo the headlights, the fog lights, the little plastic splitter, which took months to actually get. Uh, why? Simply because these things are hard to get now and most of them are no longer manufacture them. Now this car was a white stripe car and basically I laid vinyl overlay which was getting old and I had to pay that. No big deal. These are even modifications that don't exist necessarily for the average person buying a stock GT. But here are some of the more common issues that perhaps you need to consider. The first thing you need to pay attention to is that a lot of the plastic basically on the car, like the wipers and the edges here, are basically plastic. And this trim is not getting old and it's going to be very, very hard to replace. And some of this may be needed over time or even right from the beginning. Other issues that you're going to notice, which are very common with the 4 GT, is basically that these pieces here are basically plastic. And when you have plastic pieces here, what you have is an opportunity to replace them with the billet better counterparts. And those parts are about $1,000. So if you wanted this not to be basically plastic and you wanted it to be billet, beautiful, and not expanding, you would basically need to spend $1,000. Other issues that have basically come across this car is that this little piece of plastic was melted originally when I got it, and I was able to find one on eBay for a couple of hundred dollars. And of course, the exhaust tips were redone, repolished, and recoded along with the exhaust. Other basic, more common issues is that the diffuser under, you'll see some basic little scrapes on each side. Those scrapes basically come from uh, the fact that the car is about like two inches off the floor, 
So basically, it gives you uh, a very low amount of clearance from the back if you're backing into anything. Here's the worst part. It doesn't have a camera. So basically, as you're backing up, if you make any type of mistake, it could be a very costly oops. Inside the car are more common issues. Now, while my motor is almost a 1,000 horsepower Whipple upgraded motor, the average 4GT is not, and so we're not even going to talk about the custom aftermarket upgrade, but let's talk about some of the more basic things that do occur with the car. First off, one of the things you have to check for all the time in these cars is that the doors on hit here, because a lot of times the doors here basically make up, is seeing how wide they are, they basically make up the biggest mistakes people make is just throwing the door into their trash can or something. The other issue here with looking at the car from the outside in is basically these sills here, these Ford sills, are basically the most hit ones. So if you see them online, they often don't have photos of them because they're hard to tell. Luckily, one of the best strategies or things you can do is basically cover them in vinyl like I have so it prevents future damage if they aren't already or if they're in good shape. Basically, you prevent them from getting uh, actually damaged. Other elements that get damaged which are basically just on time frame and have nothing to do with misusage of the car is these dashboards around the sims right in the middle start to come apart. And that in itself is also an issue because you'll start noticing little bits of wear and tear around that and expansion from basically the plastic, the vinyl, and everything else. And finally, this is one of the most common and annoying issues with the 4GT. 99% of the gauges actually no longer work. You see, for the, the gauge system in the 4GT is basically what I consider uh, a completely defective system. What I mean by that is one of the number one ways you can fry the gauges, which is very common and happens on a lot of GCs, is basically by turning on the car and hitting the start button, because there's an engine start button, hitting it twice while the car is on. It will short circuit the gauges and cause them not to work, completely making your gauges obsolete which means that you then have to buy replacement gauges. And here comes the problem. Ford no longer supplies replacement gauges. So what you do have to do is go to a company called Speed Hut, which basically gets you a whole new set of gauges that they can be customized, et cetera, don't look as cool. A whole set will run you about $2,000 and can basically uh, redo the, the gauge setup here. I have that set. It hasn't yet been installed because I haven't yet fried my gauges, but it's very common. One of my gauges is fried out of... Uh, all seven of them. The center of the steering wheel also has a 4GT emblem and a metal uh, kind of airbag shield. That is often oxidized and damaged, something else to look at. And finally, in the car itself, outside of all of the motor complications and everything else that may or may not occur, believe it or not, these cars are pretty reliable. The one issue with the motors is that basically things get old. And as you expect from a 20-year-old car, there are things like seals and or spark plugs and services that need to be done that are often are overlooked in these cars because they're not driven that much. The other part that I will mention needs to be addressed fairly quickly, and a lot of people don't realize, again, due to age, is the latches that are basically here holding this piece up when it's open. Once these actual struts that are here that basically hold this piece get old, they can no longer actually support the back mechanism, so it won't actually hold up while you actually working on the car. And basically, that's the gist of everything that goes wrong with a 4GT that really goes wrong with all 4GTs. And the problem is if you don't have friends in the business or if you don't have an opportunity to get labor at a very affordable rate, it's going to cost you a lot of money to bring it back to life. So you have to factor that into the car. Uh, ideally, from an investment standpoint, you want to be as close to a quarter million dollars on the car as you can with uh, reasonable miles, meaning you don't want a car with 20,000 miles or anything, but if you have 10,000 or around there at that 250K range for a 2006 four option car, you're doing well. But you have to factor in that any cost of repairs will obviously add to that. So you have to go from there and try to be all in in the car at that dollar. So if you're trying to buy a 4GT, hopefully this has helped you understand some of the issues that are very common on the 4GT. And basically, I really hope that many of you will consider this car as it is one of the best investments in the future. From my perspective, these four GTs are now about 200% of what their MSRP was. But one of their key things about these cars is the value that they offer that no longer exists in the investment market. I mean, think about it. We have a six-speed transmission. We have a mid-engine uh, car. We have no traction control. And we have a historic heritage. Put all of these together, and you have recipe for an incredible investment piece in the next five to 10 years. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Click the thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, no problem. Give me feedback, give me comments, and more importantly, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Remember guys, 
We're going to drop new content for you, trying to get you educated in the exotic car space and what makes a car a good investment. And of course, of course, visit Exotic Car Hacks for a free training into the description. I'll catch you guys on the next video.